got a lot of different topics to talk about today, so let's bring in the doctor first things first. Good to see you again. Yeah, likewise, yeah. Tim. Glad to have you here. Sometimes we talk about the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. Uh, they usually either recommend for or against lots of different screenings, and this time they're recommending that pregnant people should be screened for high blood pressure more often, specifically looking for disorders like preeclampsia and hypertensive disorder, which tend to arise more during pregnancy. What do you think about this recommendation, and what it could mean not just for mothers, but for uh, unborn babies? Yeah, I think it's great, uh, Tim, because this is, remember, in the backdrop of a maternal health crisis in this country. Yeah. In terms of maternal deaths and complications that we see during and after pregnancy, we need to really clamp down on this. And the reason why hypertensive disorders during pregnancy, it's a, it's a pretty big, large umbrella uh, condition which has other medical conditions that uh, roll up to it is because one in three maternal deaths that happen during delivery in the U.S. Is, has some sort of relation to hypertensive disorders during pregnancy. Yeah. So that's why screening is so important so that we can catch early and start treatment early uh, for those that may have elevated high elevated blood pressures. Yeah, this ta you'd think this task force is always going to err on the side of, hey, let's do more screening, not less. That's not always the case. So usually if they say we should do more screening, it's usually an indication that that's absolutely justified. That's right. And one, one other thing I want to quickly add is that women of color are the most highest risk of uh, developing hypertensive disorders uh, during pregnancy. So it's important that we, we've touched on this topic yeah. before previously, Tim, that it, uh, you know, it all goes back into social determinants of health, access mm -hmm. to care, so more that we need to do in terms of helping these communities. Access to care, yes. All right, talking COVID, uh, for the first time in a long time, uh, nationwide hospitalizations have ticked above 20,000, nowhere close to where we were at the worst. But we're rising, really, and temperatures aren't dropping that. I would have thought maybe we'd see this a little later on in the year as things really got colder. Uh, where do you think we are in terms of the trajectory yeah, of this much, latest? Yeah, much less compared to previous summers, Tim. Last time, uh, last year, same time, we were around 30,000 or so uh, uh, hospitalizations. Yeah. We're at around just above 20,000 now. But, however, here's the warning sign, though. We know the cases have started going up. We're entering... Um, the uh, fall and winter season where people tend to stay indoors, obviously. Yep. So there's more risk of transmission. So what you can do now is roll up your sleeve and get the COVID-19 vaccine. It's approved right. now, the newly formulated vaccine. It went out last week. Uh, so please make an appointment with your pharmacy or your doctor's office to get that vaccine. Right, that's the ace up our sleeve. I'm curious to see if, if it winds up counteracting the rise we normally see because like that's you right. said, people are indoor. Uh, one more thing, the Food and Drug Administration has actually ruled against uh, a needle-free alternative to EpiPens. It's a nasal spray that's called Nephi. They said it needs to be studied further, so they didn't say no outright. But I guess just not enough, uh, uh, not enough uh, data. is known yet. Yeah, yeah we need that data uh, to, to ensure that this is actually effective clinically. Remember, this is a life-threatening allergic reaction yeah. for which an EpiPen is used, Tim. And I understand people you know, may have some phobia or fear related to needles, but it's important to understand that this nasal option actually works. So that's why the right. FDA said, even though the advisory committee voted it in May to say, yes, we give the green light, let's approve this, they said, wait a minute, let's, let's get more data. So that's what they've basically asked the drug maker to do, provide more data related to efficacy before we can say, okay, this is safe to use. Right, there's that old saying, uh Absence of evidence doesn't mean evidence of absence. In other words, they're not saying it doesn't work. They're just saying we don't know if it works one way or another yet. Absolutely. Right? So that's why. And when you're talking about something that might uh, be a life or death situation, exactly. you need those data. That's Doctor, right. thank you so thank much you. for joining us today.